Yeah, hey everybody. Uh, it's Monday the 21st of September. It's in the evening around 7 o'clock. And I just really wanted to uh, discuss two things this evening if I could. Um, the first thing really is an article which appeared several weeks ago in the Sunday Times. And it was a small article and then there was no follow up to it. There was no mention of this anywhere else in any of the Irish media. And it was only when I got uh, the, the famous Phoenix magazine on Saturday that they had a little article covering some of this. And what this is about, please excuse, this is a bit of a ramble, but I don't know how else to deal with it. But basically what it's about is uh, our biggest source for news is RTE. All right. And so that's the radio station, RTE 1, RTE 2, and then all the accompanying radio stations that they have and the various sub, little sub uh, television stations, Radio Nagelta and all that, right? Anyway, uh, outside of that, the biggest media source that we have by far is independent news and media, which is was originally built up by Dr. Tony O'Reilly and is now run by his son, Gavin O'Reilly. And one of the major shareholders is the tax evader uh, Dennis O'Brien, who, like Tony O'Reilly, or Tony O'Reilly, who's also a tax evader, jumped ship on the Irish people 62 million in capital gains when he sold his he he, he sat digi phone. Anyway, nine years ago. Anyway, that's by the way. The what's happened is an extraordinary thing has happened. There. The long knives are out between Dr. Tony O'Reilly, his son Gavin, and Dennis O'Brien. And Dennis O'Brien basically threatened uh, Gavin O'Reilly and his family, specifically his father. Now this was all in the various media, throughout the, the written media, and it would be because even though Dennis O'Brien owns around 25-26% of it, or maybe it's a bit more, he he wouldn't have total control of that newspaper group, but this, the control of it would still be down to Tony O'Reilly and his son. But what's happened in the interim is an extraordinary thing. The Sunday Times covered it a few weeks ago, and it concerns the biggest publishing, the biggest newspaper publishing outfit in Europe. And they're based in Germany, and they are called Axel Springer AG. And they control about 156 newspapers in 32 countries all throughout Europe. And they approached independent news and media in an attempt to buy a controlling interest in the company. And the reason this has happened is because, just think about this, Dennis O'Brien, for all his smart moves, these boys are all cute hooers where money's concerned, but even the smartest of hands lay out. Think on this one. Dennis O'Brien bought over one half a billion, that's correct, 500 million euros worth of independent news and media shares when they were trading at 226 to 32. Last Friday they were trading at 14 cents. So he's virtually lost about 90, 92% of his investment over the last 18 months, two years. So that's why he's a very unhappy camper because that's all borrowed money. The richest of men don't have a half a billion euros knocking around. They've got to go to big international banks to borrow that money. And that money's costing him every month. I'm sure he gets a wonderful statement of accounts saying where he is and how much money he owes the international banks that he borrowed that money from. Anyway, th that's not the point. The Axel Springer is the point. Axel Springer is the biggest publisher by far in Western Europe. To give you an idea. They own the m w apart from I'd say the the um, the Times newspaper in London. They they own De Welt, which is the big German newspaper, the intellectual newspaper. They own all these bills, and they own all, all every every country in Europe. They own the Poland, uh, uh, Austria. Uh, understand why this is why I'm interested in this okay they, they based their whole raison d'etre their whole the tenure of their thrust of what they believe in and these five principles all right and these were 
These were initiated in 1967 when Axel Springer founded this organization and they keep revamping them up every five or ten years. And the last time they published these was 2001. What do you hear this? The first one is to uphold the liberty and laws of Germany, a country belonging to the Western family of nations and to further the unification of Europe. To promote reconciliation of Jews and Germans and support the vital interests of the State of Israel. To support the transatlantic alliance and solidarity with the United States of America and the common values of free nations. To reject all forms of political extremism. To uphold the principles of a free market economy and their corporate constitution defines fundamental socio and political convictions but it does not offer opinions some contradiction there anyway the other thing is that since 2005 it has refused to support any left-wing parties in Europe so if you have a manifesto or whatever you can't get it published by these people all right now I just find all of this extraordinary we are in deep doo-doo and all of a sudden these boys start coming out of the woodwork like like worms we have Dr. Al Mahern, major player in the AMA, who for seven years was at the right hand, bonded to Professor Alan Greenspan at the Federal Reserve in the United States. We have this man here, <coughs> Axel Springer, appearing out of nowhere. We have another Irishman who is at the very core of the Bilderberg Group and is chairman of the Trilateral Commission, Sir Peter Sutherland. Uh, I don't think any of this is happening by accident. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just too much to just describe it all. That it, it, there's not some design involved in it. There just, just has to be. We are, as I say, we are little countries in deep doo doo, and all of a sudden it looks like we're just getting sold off the house better. We 200 of the good and mighty up, up at Farmley House, up in the Phoenix Park, over the weekend. How many of those people pay their taxes in Ireland? I bet you it's only a small amount of them. Uh, how, if you don't, how, how can you have any responsibility towards your country if you jump ship and you're a tax exit and you don't want to make any contribution to society, our society? It's alright for little people to make that contribution, but they're too big. Only little people pay taxes. Anyway, the final thing I want to cover basically is uh, we, we discussed it uh, in one of the previous snips last week and uh, <coughs> it's from the Irish Times, Saturday's Irish Times and thank goodness somebody agrees with me, I don't feel I'm on my own and this is from uh, a man I would not see eye to eye with but on this particular thing obviously I do and he is the finance spokesman for Fine Gael, a man called Richard Br Bruton and I just put it up, it's, it's from the Irish Times, it's an article by Colin Keena and he says that basically uh, they've done research, which I, I wasn't able to do this research, but obviously they can draw it down on <coughs> academic economists and that and basically what they're, this is about NAMA and what, it, what they're saying is that the market forecast for the average interbank rate over the next 10 years and that's the money that we're, you know, we're borrowing from, from the, the, the uh, the European Central Bank for NAMA, the 54 billion, <coughs> it will cost on average 3.8% they reckon per year. So that puts a 15 billion hole in the whole of the NAMA project. And the end of it is a very interesting thing. It says clearly, this is a spokesman from the Department of Finance confirmed that the interest will be paid by NAMA and not by the banks. So it's free interest for the boys. We'll talk later. Thank you very much. I put that up so you can have a look at it, that little article. Thank you.